Hey guys, Fred here at Math and Engineering. Uh, we're going to look at this video uh, at a few more derivatives, but we're going to look at trigonometric uh, functions, something that we haven't really looked at yet. So this is just going to be a, a brief overview of that. We're not going to go into too much theory, and we're going to solve a couple questions. So if we're looking at uh, the definition part here in the pink, I've written out some, some definitions of uh, some simple derivatives for trigonometric functions, and that's something that you're going to have to memorize, okay? So memorize all of these, and there's just a couple tricks, okay? Um, the first two are going to be, I guess not the most important, but the most common ones that you'll come across is sine x and cos x. You'll always see the derivative of sine x and cos x. And the derivative of sine x is equal to cos x, very simple. The derivative uh, with respect to x of cos x is equal to negative sine x, okay? And sine and cos are periodic functions, okay? Is they're waves, and they, they continue to go on to infinity. And because of that, the derivatives of them kind of loop, okay? So what I mean by that is, so the derivative of sine x, as we can see here, okay, the derivative of sine x is equal to cos x, okay? The derivative of cos x is equal to negative sine x, okay? And the derivative of negative sine x is equal to negative cos x, all right? And then we, as you, as you can see, we're going to come back to the, the beginning, all right? So negative cos x is equal to sine x, all right? So, at, and that just continues forever, okay? And then derivative of sine x is cos x, derivative of cos x is negative sine x, derivative of negative sine x is negative cos x, and it just continues to infinity, okay? So that's one uh, theme that you'll see that's, that's a little bit different from taking the derivatives of, for example, polynomial functions. And uh, that, that's something that you're just gonna have to get used to. This one below here, uh, the derivative of tan x is equal to secant squared x, all right? Something, just memorize that. There's, you don't really need to understand that per se. And over here, all right, we have uh, a different set of functions, okay? We have cosecant and secant x and cotangent x, okay? So cosecant x, okay, don't get confused um, with cosecant x and secant x, okay? They're not arc sine or arc cos. They're not, the, that's a completely different function, okay? Cosecant is actually one over sine x, okay? And secant x is actually one over cos x. Okay, and cotangent is one over tan x. Okay, so that's something to keep in mind, okay? That's different from arc tan, it's different from, uh, for example, sen, sine to the negative one x or something. It's, that's not the same thing, okay? So just keep that in mind. Uh, cosecant x is equal to negative cosecant x cotangent x, secant x is equal to secant x tan x, and cotangent x is equal to negative cosecant squared x. Uh, you know what, those are probably in your books. I'm sure your professors have given you those. Uh, my suggestion to you is just to memorize them get them in, the, in your head, do a ton of different problems so that they're, you know, they're very um, available to you in your brain when you're, when you're writing the midterm, because you don't want to forget one of those and, and miss a question. All right, so with that being said, let's apply some of those rules to two fairly simple questions, and then in the next video we'll do three more, maybe trickier ones. So let's start with question one. We have f of x is equal to root x times sine x, all right? So to me, this looks like the, the product rule. Does it not? We have two functions, all right, of x multiplied by each other. One is root x and the other one is a trigonometric function. So let's go ahead and let's start that. And we're going to apply the product rule. We're going to take that one half, all right, x to the one half. We're gonna multiply that by x, all right? So we're going to have one half of x. And then we're going to have at the, to the power of one half minus one, okay? and that is going to give us negative one over two. So that's a pretty common, uh, common derivative to take. So if you just kinda, you'll, you'll do that one a few times and you'll just start to remember it, okay? And that is going to be multiplied by the second function, sine x, and then we're going to add the derivative of sine x times uh, the first function, all right? So the derivative of sine x, if we come up here, we see that it's cos x, okay? Cos x times root x. All right, and that's pretty much it. I mean, we could kind of clean up the left side a little bit, but we, we don't really necessarily need to, uh, but we'll do it anyway. Okay, so we have sine x over, and this is x to the negative one half. Okay, so that's, if we bring the x down to the denominator and we square root it, we should be left with two root x plus cosine x root x. All right, so that is 
our derivative for the first one. All right, so let's go ahead and move to the bottom one. That looks a little bit trickier. And right off the bat, I mean, we have a, we have a, uh, a fraction on in question two, so I think we know that we're gonna have to apply the quotient rule here. So let's go ahead and start to do that. All right, we have the derivative of the top, of the top x is, you know, derivative of x is just one times the bottom. Okay, so we have two minus 10 x minus derivative of the bottom. Derivative of two is, as we know, derivative of constant is zero. And what's the derivative of tan x? Well, that's a good question. Derivative of tan x here is secant squared x. So let's include that. And we are going to multiply that by x. All right, and let's just keep that in square brackets there. So, and let's just take the square of the bottom here x squared. Okay, very good. And well, what can we do here? We can't really do much. That looks about as, as good as it gets. So let's just rewrite it. So we have 2 minus 10x minus x secant squared x over 2 minus 10x squared. Whoops, excuse me. It's a little bit messy, sorry about that. I put the square inside the bracket by accident. And that is the derivative of that function. All right, so what we've done here, we've solved two problems, uh, fairly simple ones that had a mixture of both, uh, I guess, polynomial functions and trigonometric functions, okay? And that's when it's gonna start to get a little trickier. You're gonna have to memorize these and, you know, once you memorize them though, it's not too hard. We'll do a few more next video just to, uh, you know, really cement your knowledge in this, in this section and, you know, get you on your way. All right. Thanks for watching guys. Stay tuned for the next one.